Sue Cortez. I'm with SELC Fabrics, and I'm here to show you how to hand dye fabric. There are three things that you need to dye fabric. The first thing is you need to use dyes. And I buy Procyon MX Fiber Reactive dyes. They come in a powder, and then I simply mix them with water to get them in liquid form. Um, I like the fiber reactive dyes because they are non-toxic. However, they are such a fine powder that you need to wear a, a dust mask on when you're mixing them into the water, okay? The other thing you need is soda ash, which is also called sodium carbonate. You can buy it at a pool supply place. It's the pH increaser. And so you can buy it at the pool supply place as pH increaser, or I like to buy Arm & Hammer washing soda, and you can get that at Meyers. It's on the bottom shelf in the laundry detergent aisle, and that is also the sodium carbonate. The third thing you need is fabric, and I use white cotton fabric. However, these dyes will also work on silk fabric and mixes and on this fabric you can tell it is a mix because you can see some graininess in it and so it's a cotton poly blend with the silk fabric this one is a silk cotton blend and it's you can see the difference between the cotton and the silk fabric it dyes differently if you just buy regular cotton fabric off the shelf, it will dye differently than fabric that has been prepared for dyeing. And normally it, in the quilt shop, you'll just hear it called PFD fabric. This is a fabric that was non-prepared for dyeing. This was prepared for dyeing. So these went in the same bag with the same amount of dye, the same amount of um, soda ash in the same temperature and dot, sat in there for the same length of time and you can see quite the difference in color. Again, this was a regular cotton fabric. This was a prepared for dyeing fabric. So there's quite a difference in color that you can get. Now with saying that, here is a piece of regular fabric off the shelf. You can still get some good co or color out of it but you have to scour it before, which just means that you're washing it with soda ash and synthropol before you actually dye the fabric, okay? Here is also a piece of white on white fabric that I've dyed, and I've gotten some really good intense color out of that by scouring it before I dyed it. Now, with talking about technique, you can get a lot of variation in what you do with these dyes. You can get very solid colored fabrics or you can get some modeling, some color variation in your pieces. And here's another one that has some nice variation. You can go from light to dark in the same piece of fabric. And this is what's called an ombre. You can also go through the whole rainbow in one piece of fabric. Then you get into some different techniques. This piece of fabric was fan folded. So I folded it and the blue streaks were the part that sat in the dye and the white was sticking up out of the dye. So I got a nice stripe out of that. This piece of fabric I used a rubber band and wrapped it around the fabric to keep certain spots white. And again it comes out with a neat texture. Here's another piece, and you can see the, the texturing in it. That was wrapped around a piece of rope, and then the rope was scrunched. And so you get some variation in color that creates texture on the fabric. And here are some more pieces. These were 
what is called shibori done, which means I wrapped them around a pole and scrunched them and then poured dye on them. Dye on them. So that has some neat texturing. And for all you people who were around in the 70s, you can also do these dye, or this technique to do tie dye. Okay. The other thing that I love to do with these dyes is snow dyeing. And let me show you some examples of that. With the snow dyeing, you actually use the snow to dye the fabric. So you take a piece of fabric that you've soaked in the soda ash water and you put it on a grate inside of a tub. You put three or four inches of snow on top of that fabric and then you squirt your dyes in the snow and you let them sit in your house overnight so that the snow melts and deposits the dye in different places. So you get this really nice watercolor effect on your fabric. And I have a couple other pieces where I combined manipulating the fabric, folding the fabric, and snow dyeing. And it created this really cool mandala effect. This one doesn't have the circular pattern in the front. It was just folded randomly. But on this one, you can see that nice radial pattern going on in it. So you, you still have the watercolor, but you've got a design to it. Okay? So now we're going to start actually dyeing fabric. And the first thing I'm going to do is a technique with a baggie. Pardon me a second, I'm looking for my water. I'm gonna steal someone else's. All right. Um, so the fabric is pre-wet, so I'm gonna take, this is a fat quarter of fabric, and I'm going to stick it in the baggie, and I'm going to take a quarter cup of water, and stick that in here. And then I'm going to take about a quarter cup of dye solution. This is my red. And I'm going to stick it in the baggie. Now I'm gonna zip that up for a second. And I'm, whoops, let me get some air out of there so I can squish the fabric. So now I'm going to massage the fabric and get the dye on the fabric and throughout the fabric. The more massaging you do, the smoother, flatter color you'll get. If you leave it, just drop it in there and pour the water in the dye and leave it, you'll get more of that modeling. After you've massaged that for a little while, then you need to put your soda ash on. The soda ash is actually the catalyst for the chemical reaction that causes the dye to chemically bond to the fabric. So after you pour that on, again you need to do a little massaging to make sure that it thoroughly works through the fabric. Then you're going to let this sit for about eight hours and then you'll go back and rinse it out. And you'll continue to rinse it out until the water comes clear. And then you know that you've got all the excess dye out of it. And then you can throw it in your washing machine for one final rinse just to make sure everything's out of it. And then it's good to be used. The other thing I'd like to show you how to do is how to do that gradation from the light to dark, that ombre. So this is a half yard of fabric, pardon me, shaking water around. And I'm going to just kind of manipulate it in the tray and just scrunch it up. And again, 
Because this fabric is already wet, I don't think I need the extra water, so I'm just going to use the dye. And instead of doing red again, let's mix purple. Who knows how to mix purple? What two colors go into purple? Yes, very good, blue and red. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put half blue and half red so that I get a nice even purple. And to do the gradation, I'm just going to stick something under the one end that where I want to keep it lighter to angle the pan. And I'm going to pour the dark on the, one, the end that's lower. And I'm just going to kind of smush it and massage it and keep working it up. And gradually the color will shift all the way to the top. And you can kind of see that starting to happen now. So it's just a matter of squeezing up enough dye to get it all the way to go to the top. If you're having a hard time getting it to go all the way to the top, you can water down, and this is how you would do a regular gradation if you were doing a, a baggies of different colors and you wanted them to be like a dark to a light, you would put more dark dye powder in the one end and you would water it down as you went to the other end. So I'm just going to add a little bit more dye into the middle and scrunch it a little bit more. And you can see how it's dark at one end and light up at the other end. Okay, let's do one more piece. Let's do a multicolor piece. And again, I would let this batch for about eight hours before I rinsed it. And here's a fat quarter and I'm just going to again maneuver it around the bottom of the pan. And to do a multicolor piece, I'm going to put my soda ash on first. And just make sure that it gets all over. Normally you would soak it in the soda ash for five or 10 minutes just to make sure it's thoroughly soaked in there. And I'm going to make this purple or a little more, add a little more red to it to make it a little more purpley. Okay, that's a good purple. So on this one, I'm just going to do purple, blue, and green. So I'm just going to pour a little bit of blue here and here and here. And then I'm going to put a little purple there, and there, and there. And now let's make some green. I'm going to use the yellow and the blue to make our green. And I'm going to try and make it a real light, bright green. And so I'm just going to pour this in some other areas that are still white. And now I'm just going to kind of smush it all together and let it absorb the dye that is in there and kind of transfer and mix that dye up. And again, because the soda ash is already in there, I can just let that sit for eight hours and then rinse it out. 
Now, I haven't put any soda ash on that piece yet, and that's okay. I can go back and add it in a few minutes. Probably after we're off camera, I'll add it in so I make sure that it sets. Do you guys have any questions for me? Scouring is when you wash your fabrics ahead of time, but you're going to use hot water, Synthropol, and the washing soda. Synthropol is a detergent that is very good. It's a, a very strong straight detergent. When you buy laundry detergent, it's had so many perfumes and, and fabric softeners and everything else added into it, it's not as good as using the, the straight Synthropol. Fields has it every so often, but when you buy your dye powders from either Dharma or um, Pro Chemical, you can order the Synthropol directly from them as well. Yes, ma'am. The soda ash? is a matter of um, buying the pool, either the pool increaser or the Arm & Hammer washing soda. And I use a formula of a half a cup of the sodium carbonate, which is the pool increaser or the washing soda, to a gallon of water. OK. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you all for coming. I appreciate it. Thank you.